Welcome aboard the Ear to Their podcast, the podcast that'll help you vacation like a pro in any Disney destination. For those of you standing, please sit down and hold on throughout our journey and get ready to learn how to have the time of your life. And now, here's your host, Phil Gramlich. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to Their podcast. I'm your host, Phil Gramlich. I'm also the owner and operator of Ear to Their Travel, a Disney specialized travel agency. It's my job to take away the stress, all that anxiety, and all the time that it takes to plan a Disney trip so you can focus on the fun things like having a great time with your family and friends and enjoying the magic. And as I say every week, I do all that for free. So from booking your hotel, your flight, your fast passes, your dining reservations, your special event tickets, literally anything, I plan all of that absolutely 100% free of charge. You can find this podcast, any articles I've written, or request a free, no obligation quote over at eartotheirtravel.com. Oh, and now look for me each and every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live. Yes, I'll do a Facebook Live video each and every Thursday night at 7.30. To find those shows, just go to facebook.com forward slash eartotheirfill. All right, this is episode number 57 for the week of February 27th. 2017. Now, as I say each and every week, grab a drink, grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. When Walt Disney first designed Disneyland, He wanted it to be a place where children and adults could go and have fun together. And when Walt Disney World was built, it followed that same exact model, putting family fun and a great time for everyone ahead of literally anything else. And oftentimes on this show, we focus on things the entire family can do or things that especially young kids can do in the Disney parks. That's why this week I wanted to take a different angle on a trip to Walt Disney World. And this week we are going to talk about the adult must-dos in Walt Disney World. Because I'm not really an adult myself, I needed to have someone on this episode who is in fact an adult and who can have a normal adult conversation. Unfortunately, I don't know anyone like that. So instead I called on a guy who was much, much older than I am to talk about these things. Chuck Reddy, you guys, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Uh, and I believe that was an alternative fact when you said about our age. That it's, there's not that much of a, uh, a distance between us. <laughs> I could always rely on you to bring politics up right away. <laughs> well, Even though... as an adult with no children to dis- or a wife to distract me, uh, I do have a lot of time on my hand to divulge in certain things. Yes, All right, things well... like that. We're going we're gonna to ignore that comment. We're going to go right on to... <laughs> no, Chuck, thank you for being on this. Is, these are always fun. Oh, uh, no problem. And you, what people don't know, and I want to tell them now, is I hit you with this like an hour ago. I was like, Chuck, I need to record an episode. Are you good? You were like, yeah, okay. So thank you for doing it in such short notice. You were, you're awesome. No problem. All right, so here's the deal about Disney, right? We also It's often looked at as uh, a destination that's primarily for kids, or for families with young kids, right? It's really far from the truth, as you and I both know. Oh, yes. I, I mean, I really think that Disney parks they have a ton, like tons for adults to do without kids. Uh, so I kind of wanted to shake up that reputation of, uh, you know, the, that Disney is just for kids on this episode. And I know, <laughs> because you, like you just said, you don't have kids, that you'll have some interesting ones to talk about on here. Yes. All right. Well, great comeback. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I would I would add that um, a big reason why, you know, D- Disney World um, never has any slow or off seasons anymore, really, or at least not like we used to remember, is because as a company, Disney finally started to exploit the fact that anybody and everyone is going to want to come here by themselves, with kids, without kids, at any time of the year. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I agree. It that's the thing is, yeah, we used to have the slow times, and now I, I get people asking me all the time, when is the slowest time to go to Disney? And I'm like, uh, there's not really anymore. There's really not. I always tell people there's like a three-hour window on the day <laughs> after when most East Coast schools uh, go back to school in September. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> three hours. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's kind of true. Like People think no, it now, it, uh, people are so used to saying, okay, 
Look, right after the right after the summer when school starts, it's not busy. But I'll tell you what, we've been there the last couple of years in September, early to mid September, and it's just as busy. I mean, yes. they pack people in there now, and yeah, I guess I think you've said it before on the on the on the show. People are willing to spend the money to to, to get down there, and you know, you're gonna it's gonna be busy. So that's something that I guess we have to get used to. True. Um, so all right, Chuck. So you're you're the guest. I, I'm forcing you to do this today. Why don't you go first with your first one? Okay, bear with me on the beginning of this one. But my number one thing to do for adults at Walt Disney World is to actually go down the street to Universal Studios and borrow Doc's DeLorean and go back in time when Pleasure Island was around. <laughs> but since that's unrealistic because we haven't figured out the time uh, continuum or anything, then Who hasn't actually, figured it out? I, I get to do that all the time. Okay. <laughs> True. Uh, but uh, actually, something that I and my friends have recently, I, I guess I'll say, um, uh, re, um, like, like just started to, I don't know, started to appreciate again after many years, is at the boardwalk, uh, a night where you go to Jelly Rolls and Atlantic Dance. I've actually begun to really appreciate that again. Uh, one forgets that Atlantic Dance is, first of all, no cover charge. And uh, the music and, um, and, and the lighting and the videos and the atmosphere is great if you really do want a dance club type of atmosphere. It's not like it used to be a Pleasure Island, but, uh, but it's good enough, especially now that we're older and we can't dance for more than about two hours straight anyway. And, um, and then Jelly Rolls. I recently went to Jelly Rolls again after many, many years. And so the combination of those two things right next to each other and maybe like having a dinner or something, that is my number one choice if you are adults going to Disney World by yourselves. I listen. I really, I really like that one. Even though I wouldn't do the Atlantic dance part, you know me very well. <laughs> I'm not a dancer. No, I said, don't think you would dance for a couple hours. No, you said dance for two hours. I'm like thirty seconds stops. <laughs> well, considering a Pleasure Island days, I remember dancing like straight from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. when it was last call. I did, but not. now half that <laughs> if lucky. I would my Pleasure Island days. I would. Spend half the night getting enough liquid carriage up to talk to a female, and then spend the other <laughs> half of the night being rejected by the females that I got to, get to talk to. So what a waste that. of time! <laughs> so I did not have the, the popular or the the same experience that you had over there. But you know the definition of insanity. You know when you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Each I night. know, and eventually it worked <laughs> out. Look, I'm married for nine years. Well, I true, have three kids. True. But then again, I knew Amy through different ways. I didn't. Right, actually, so you didn't meet her at Pleasure Island. No, no. no. I, I actually met her in the parking lot at Vista Way. Did you know that story? Huh. Do you know that story? Yes, yes. I think, yes, yes. I know the basic story, yes. Yeah, yeah. We met. She was looking for my apartment, but not for me, believe it or not. Yes. Uh, for another <laughs> guy. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, that's my, uh, that was my roommate. And, uh, yeah, he, he uh, it's weird because he ended up in our wedding. It's a strange thing. But, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, that's how Amy and I met. I did not get the guts up to talk to her. She came up and talked to me, which was not a problem I usually had when I was that age, when I was, like, in college age. Uh, but, no, I, liked the, I really liked your, call, your pick on that one. one and thing, I wonder if a, lot of, if a lot of people listening, um, if they're even familiar with Jelly Rolls right, and yeah. the concept of a dueling piano bar, because I never knew the concept until Jelly Rolls opened. Yeah, I don't think I did either. And then I, since then, I, had, I went to... Like a couple of Howl at the Moon uh, bars, one in, right, right, one in Baltimore, and they have one in Philadelphia now. Uh, but yeah, there's actually uh, in, at Gaylord Palms they do, or at least they used to have a dueling piano bar there as well. That's in uh, right outside Orlando, over by Celebration. But yeah, that it's a good one. I like Jelly Rolls a lot. Uh, the Atlantic Dance thing, I still think of the Swing Dance nights back on my college program. When yes, because it, it, it was with, themed for that, but they 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 stopped doing that kind of music a long time ago. Nobody yeah. was do, doing that. No, like Big Bad Voodoo Daddy and, and Brian Setzer Orchestra and those guys. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, yeah, but good call. But see, when I'm at the boardwalk, we're usually do- – I see. I, let me see if I had that on my list because I'm trying to think. That was when I was debating. No, I assumed I you have one of them. No? I, I was thinking – see, Big River Grill is my, is my go-to at the boardwalk. But – it's and, and ESPN, both of them. Yeah, but since they're not on my list, I'll kind of quickly talk about them now. Uh, I really like Big River Grill because it's a brewery, and it's I, you know I like the the craft beers and all that stuff. They have good food for kids. I know this isn't about kids. I'm sorry, but my kids like it there too. Uh, but for an adult, you can go in. They have some TVs at the bar. You can go 
get a drink, watch you know a playoff game or something. And then, you know, like I said, they have craft beers. They change them up a lot. And then over at ESPN, I always forget what it's called, the club or the zone. It's a club, right? ESPN no, club. I think it's zone. I think you're wrong. Or is it club, club zone? Isn't it club <laughs> I zone? I don't think it's club zone. <laughs> I think it's the club, and I think the zone was the one out in oh, LA. Oh, zone is when they used to have those big uh, – Yeah, yeah. All over they the... didn't last long no. at all, did they? No, no, yeah. I think it's club in, in uh, yeah, probably right. Anaheim and Orlando, and then it was the zone everywhere else. Anyway – uh, that's a perfect place for adults to go if you want to, again, sit at the bar. You have a playoff game. You have a regular you know, NFL Sunday game on. I know, Chuck, you're getting bored to tears. I'm talking about EFL I literally sports. stopped listening. <laughs> 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 All right. But that's my contribution from the boardwalk. I like that. And I like the boardwalk at night in general for adults because I really like going over there. They have live music sometimes. There's magicians that walk up and down a boardwalk, which are, who are really, really good. You can kind of stand and watch a, a magic show or a juggler. Or somebody, and it it sounds corny, right? Talking about it now, but it's really not. It's a fun show to sit and watch. The comedians and the, the you know the magicians are a little. They're not edgy, but they're not for kids either. So it's a lot of fun. So I like spending time over there at the boardwalk at night. That's a really good one. Yes, good point. <laughs> um, and I will say, <laughs> although my only critique is going to be like ESP, the ESPN Club. Yes, even though I don't care about sports whatsoever. Um, I, I see why people like it, and obviously it's it's special because it is the only place you can go to that's actually themed and um, and 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 is branded, you know, to ESPN, which is owned by Disney. So I see how it's, it's special. Big River Grill. I'm sorry, but when you describe it, you're describing a gajillion restaurants in every metropolitan area in America. <laughs> no, I agree. You're right about that. You are. But I yes, and you know, whenever I'm with you all, and you guys pick Big River Grill, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I'd is, rather just stop at McDonald's on the way home. <laughs> now, now you're getting a little crazy, but it's, I get it. I, it is. It's like a rock bottom brewery or one of those places that's a chain that has craft beers. But you have to understand, it isn't easy to get a good craft beer in Walt Disney World. They have, they've gotten better with the, at the bars. And, well, in Epcot, though. Yeah, yeah, Epcot's good, and they've gotten better at the resorts. But, you know, if you want a, good, a really good beer, it's a good place to go. And I'm thinking adults, it's a good place to go. No, um, good point, and that's where we—that's where my hypocrisy comes in because you are describing something that adults who go to Disney World uh, without kids would uh, would want to do. But I've always said that I cannot fathom designing my entire dinner or my evening around a specific beer to be drank. And I've always said that, and you've always made fun of me about it, and that's fine. Yeah, because it's funny. <laughs> but it technically, is, you're people, right. Yeah, technically, people do. I, I understand you're right. Like now, you know, just as much as there's. Wine pairings with meals. There's beer pairings. True, people, true. You know, That's I forget true. what that person is called. Uh, oh yeah, we've said you've said that before in another yeah, podcast. I don't remember the name. Yeah. So I'm not, nah. we're gonna go on. I'm just gonna go on to my next one. We'll just skip over this. Okay. Uh, this whole charade and nonsense. Um, <laughs> all right. So my first one is over at the formerly known uh, Downtown Disney. I almost called it the right name. The former <laughs> Downtown Disney and now Disney Springs, and it's one that listen. I never, ever, ever, ever had any reason to try this one. I wasn't going to do it until we were given tickets, and I decided, you know what? All right, we'll give it a shot. And it's, how do you say it? Cirque du Soleil or Cirque du Soleil? How do you say that? I believe it's Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> and listen, people love you doing the voices. I've gotten feedback from people. Seriously, I've gotten emails from people who say, I love Chuck's accents, even though that people have to like people from France or with French accents <laughs> want to probably murder you after they hear you do that. But yeah, but that's the really first one bit that I know that I'm chopping it. It's just exactly. that I'm doing it just to laugh at myself. It's very funny. So yes, so Cirque, as I will call it from here on out. Yeah, Cirque, sir. I I always thought I would see the commercials. You know, when I was in my in my room watching Stacy getting ready for my day, and I'd be like, I'm not going to see that show. It's weird. There's people in clown makeup. They're doing weird things. There's guys without shirts flying around. I, I had no desire to see it. And Amy and I got tickets years ago. And it's been the same show since it opened. And we were like, all right, I guess I'll go see it. And Chuck, I was blown away by how good it was. I really was. I couldn't believe that the, the stuff that these performers could do. Like, it's crazy. Like the acrobatics and the, the kids with it. Like the... the um. It's almost like a yo-yo, but it's like this string that they bounce a spinning top on. And they throw it up in the air, like, you know, 20 feet, and they catch it. And there's the tightrope walkers and the, the jugglers. And it, it's crazy how, how, like, talented these people are. So, I, you know, it, again, it looks, it looked 
so weird to me. It looked like something I would never even appreciate at all. But after seeing it, I couldn't believe how much I liked that. I thought it was awesome. So that's when I think if you're an adult going and you know, I think little kids might not appreciate it. I've we haven't taken our kids, uh, but if you're an adult and you're at Disney Springs and you're trying to, you know, or you have to buy them in advance, but you want to, you know, have a fun night. I think it's a good choice. Yes, and I'll say that uh, Cirque du Soleil say dans mon list because I don't remember the French word for list, but. Um, uh, it is on my list, but I, I kind of have a love-hate thing for it because personally, at this point, yes, I saw it so many times when it started because they were constantly giving us cast members free free tickets. Right. There was always a way to get a free ticket. So I saw it like seven times, uh, and that would have been, what, 1998? Yep. Um, so at this point, I would only go if somebody paid for me or if there was a Groupon for like 80% off <laughs> because it is the same show, and it's a shame that it's the same show. I know they do change certain certain aspects of it but in general it's the same show right uh meanwhile in las vegas there are four or five permanent cirque du soleils all with different uh, subjects and there's a reason why yes if you're thinking about you know you're going to walt disney world as adults obviously the other city in america that you would that most adults would travel to without kids would be las vegas and there's a reason that those those though there's like four or five of them each of the, their tickets are you know hundred dollars or more and they are like sold out night after night for like 20 years so they're obviously very popular, and it is a great show. But I just wish that they would finally switch it out with another show, though. I would buy a ticket on day one. Yeah, you wonder that. why, after all these years, that, yeah, like, you're, like you said, they change aspects and they change acts inside the show. Yes, they change acts, yes. But it, it has been primarily the same thing since it, it opened. Uh, we're, how many years is that now? It's 20 years? 98. It was 1998. Yeah, 19 years? Uh, yeah. It's a long time. But... Again, if you haven't seen it, if you're one of the people like me who saw the building for years, saw the commercials for years, and was like, eh, that's weird, go see it. It's worth it. If you're not like Chuck, Chuck, who <laughs> missed a privilege over here and seen it eight times. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and also, I know that uh, there are traveling Cirque du Soleil's that go there to are, big yeah. cities around the country. So I, I know it's not the same as the permanent shows, not even close, apparently, especially with you know the overall theme and everything. But... That could give you a good preview, I guess, I suppose. You're right. I'm just sitting there thinking like, oh, I'm Chuck Rodriguez. I've seen it <laughs> 10 times. I'm not going to pay again. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't ever pay the money for that. <laughs> anyway, don't listen to Chuck. It's a great show. Go see it. All right. Go ahead, Chuck, with your next one. Okay. Then another one dear to my, my heart after uh, dancing the night away. And, of course, by that, now it means in my early 40s, two hours or less. Um, is uh, the Ganacherie, there's more French to for you, uh, at uh, Disney Springs. Uh, what was that again? You are you say the again? Ganacherie. Nice, thank you. I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce it that way. Um, <laughs> you don't know? But, <laughs> no, it probably is. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so, you know, fine, fine, expensive chocolates usually are not children's things. I believe my parents said that at the age four, I was already appreciating you know, very expensive European chocolates, but that's rare for most kids. I think most kids would be happy with a Hershey bar when I just like, I just put my nose up to the, the, even the concept of somebody giving me a Hershey bar nowadays. See, that's how you and um, I are so different. This is why I wanted yeah. you on this show <laughs> because Hershey bars are my favorite chocolate ever. Okay. So, yes, but except that if you have a Hershey bar in one hand and a ganacherie bar in the other hand and you take bites from one after the other, uh, there's no way that you are not going to be able to tell that uh, the ganacherie bar, although five times the price, uh, is completely superior. And so if you are adults, if the place is very small, it is expensive. I mean, I believe that like just getting six different truffles costs like 15 or $16. Um, but, uh, but if you do love fine chocolate and fine desserts, then, then yes, I, I, I think you should do that. I know a lot of people pair chocolates with wine. It's not my thing yet. Uh, but I'm sure you could also get a, a glass of wine or something and pair it with that. And, uh, yeah, so I do recommend uh, the ganacherie. What's funny is when I was in Ireland, they, at different hotels, they paired uh, chocolate with Guinness, with different kinds of Guinness. So that was kind of cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm not, and they're like, you should take a bite of the chocolate and then take a sip of the Guinness. I'm like, eh, it's not really, I don't really do that. I'm not really a big chocolate guy, but, <laughs> you know, I, I tried it. It would just be nice. But, yeah, I listen, you have way more to say about the ganacherie than I have, <laughs> as I say it in my very Philadelphia accent. I, I, you, you appreciate chocolate. You appreciate that kind of thing. I don't. I'm, 
like you feel about chocolate, that's the way I feel about beer. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Like exactly. I just can't. I, I don't appreciate the finer things. I don't. I, I admit it. I if you if see if you were to sit me down with the Hershey bar and with the the one that was five times more expensive, I'm probably going with the Hershey bar. And if you put almonds in my Hershey bar, you're ruining it. <laughs> I do so, agree with you on that one. So I hate a, nuts mixed with my chocolate. What the heck is that? You don't put almonds in a perfectly good Hershey I'm bar. It's crazy. Not, yeah, I'm not a and fan. The, and the cookies and cream Hershey bar, get out of here. I can't do that either. I don't understand why you would do that. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's, you're ruining a perfectly good piece of chocolate. Yeah, so that's all I have to say about it because I don't really, I can't really go into the differences of chocolates just like you can't go into the differences the difference of, beer. of beers. It's true. No. All right, so I'm looking around my list. Okay, where do I want to go here? All right, my next one. And you see, this is, I kind of took, I'm painting this one with a really broad stroke. So if you want to kind of call me on it, fine. But Okay. Because this isn't a specific one thing. It's a okay. group of things. And it's right. going to... Nicer restaurants in Walt Disney World. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I didn't think of specific ones either. You're All right, right cool. That makes okay. perfect sense. All right, so listen, fine dining at Walt Disney World. Sure, yeah. and it's not even it doesn't have to be fine, but it's it's you know, yeah, I guess it is. I guess the ones that I have on my list. Like I was thinking, Artist Point at the Wilderness Lodge, uh, Yachtsman Steakhouse at the Yacht Club, the Boathouse, of course, something like Victoria and Alberts. They're they're great, great meals. They have awesome, like, head chefs at these places. You wouldn't, like, again, you think Walt Disney World, you don't think fine dining. You just don't. When it, at least if you're not a veteran of the parks and the, and the resorts, you don't. I would, I would say, though, that that has quickly has changed because there's article after article, even in, in media outlets that, that could care less about, the, you know, theme parks or anything like that. And it, it's definitely, got, I think the secret's out. I think the secret's out now. Yeah, yeah. You're probably right because I recently... Uh, we did, I, I tried to, you know, I'm not even going to tell the story because <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to have to mention names and people I talked to at Disney and I don't, anyway, uh, I, I got a, an invite from someone for a, for a Disney restaurant opening that I couldn't make. And I realized that I'm small potatoes on the Disney, uh, you know, media list. So if they're reaching out to me to let people know about it. They're reaching out to a lot of people, to you know what I mean. So I kind of sure. feel like they're really trying to get the word out there that hey, we're not burgers and hot dogs and cotton candy. We Can I have, ask which restaurant was it? Uh, I'd rather not say. Okay. <laughs> only because <laughs> I, I've, I've only because I've been in contact with the person after, and I might do something down the line. Uh, okay. So I don't want to burn any bridges. Um, okay. With said restaurant. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> But I'll tell you, I'll tell you when we're done recording. Um, so anyway, I lost my train of thought. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's, listen, really good meals, really good settings. Like I said, great head chefs that focus way more on the meal than the entertainment factor. Like, listen, there's some restaurants at Disney that you go to for the entertainment, right? You're going to fitness yeah. primetime to, for the entertainment, for the show. Listen, the food is good and that's a, a bonus. That's a, an no, in the end, I call that – it's like TGI Friday or Chili's food. It yeah, really it's, is it's not, not any bad, better than that. It's not bad. No, it's not bad. No. But it's, you're going because – You're not you know, going for the food though. Right. And the same as a lot of the character meals and the buffets. But these places are different. You're going to these for the food. The actual and, food, yes. Yeah, not to say that the, the setting and the theming isn't great because it always is. But – you know, because it's always a sense of story no matter what you're doing in the parks or the resorts. But, you know, these places have – you know, that they take, take the food to a completely different level. And that's something that, as an adult, I think you appreciate a, an awful lot more than if you are a kid or if you have kids. Listen, we've gone to nice restaurants with my kids. I have enjoyed the food, but I haven't taken my time to enjoy the food. You know what I mean? Like, you're no. kind of like, you're waiting. <laughs> and it's usually cold by the time you're eating it. It's a good point. And you're waiting for the disruption, right? You're like, and my kids, you've been to restaurants with my kids on several occasions. I would say 90% of the time, they're excellent. But there's, Yes, I've seen worse. I've yeah, seen other I, kids that are way worse. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> that is, no, my, mind you, that is my best compliment to any parents with children, yeah, is that enough. I've seen kids that are worse. <laughs> fair enough. All right. So, But I think like you know, you're always, as a parent, you're always waiting for that distraction, for that problem to come along. So as an adult without kids, you're not, yeah, not going to enjoy You're it. not going to have to worry about it. So you just go and, oh, by the way, 
one that I know we focus mostly on Walt Disney World, but one restaurant that I think fits this perfectly, and there are kids in it, but the Blue Bayou at Disneyland isn't exactly fine dining. No. I love, that's one of my favorite restaurants that Disney's ever done. I just love singing oh, yeah. and eating, and, and that's it's, the, it's, the it's atmosphere. an awesome place. And the yeah. food is good, too, because the it's not good. food that, that you can eat, you know, you can't find really restaurants around the country uh, convenient to you that have that type of real authentic southern food, yeah. usually, unless, of course, you live in the south, but, but yeah. Like, but it's you, really the, the it's really the uh, it's really the in the atmosphere though. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's the atmosphere. It's the yeah. feel. It's the boats from pirates going around the restaurant. I mean, it's honestly, cool. I would put Blue Bayou in the same genre as like the reason you'd want to go would be like prime time or sci fi. Yeah, you're right. It's probably more of a, a of the experience than than it is the food. Yeah. Um, but that's the first one. You know what it is too? Because I haven't been to the nicer. The, I haven't been to Steakhouse Fifty Five, and I haven't been to Club Thirty Three. And apparently right. Disney uses numbers in a lot of the restaurants. <laughs> I just, those were the first two to pop off my head, and I'm like, why do they use numbers? Um, but anyway, yeah, you're probably right about that. But I, I, that's just one that, I, that sticks out in my mind as one of the, the big Disneyland ones that I loved. Uh, and we are taking our trip back out. Did I tell you that? We're going back out to Disneyland in July. And we're taking, no, no. And we're taking the kids. We're going out for the uh, D23 Expo. Uh, oh, good for you. Okay, oh, I'll be the kids' first time to the to the West Coast. Yes, so very much looking forward to the uh, the week. Very much not looking forward. Well, I don't care, but I'm sure the people who are going to be on the flight with us won't love them. <laughs> now they'll be fine. <laughs> they've never had a problem on a flight. They've always been so good on flights. They've been flying since they were a couple months old. So I'm not really worried about it. But just in case, I'm warning everyone now: if you are taking a flight from Philadelphia. To LAX in <laughs> July of 2018, <laughs> you may have three little kids sitting next to you whose Kindles may or may not die on that flight. Okay. <laughs> Chuck, you're up for your next one. Um, okay. Um, I lost my train of thought here. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I, okay. do that. I do that to people, not just to... Not just the girls that I tried to hit on when I was on the college program. I have a, but everyone. I have an effect on, the, on people like that. Anyway. You do. Um, not that much I could say about this, but I'm going to go ahead and just suggest, um, especially if you are here traveling, you know, from other parts of the, the country or maybe maybe what we we'll, we'll like to say smaller, smaller demographic markets around the country is uh, to take advantage of the new shopping at Disney Springs, because there are some stores and some brands that uh, that are that are rare around the country. I mean, very few cities that, you know, like a, a nice mall or something would have. And um and and yes, I mean that combined with everything else is new at Disney Springs. I think that makes for a great afternoon. And my first suggestion, always logistically to people who are coming without kids, is definitely take advantage of the theme parks really at the beginning and at the end of each day. But in the middle of the day, don't even bother. Then just do just do things like Disney Springs or hang out at your hotel or something. So I'm going to suggest uh, the shopping at Disney Springs because it actually is a lot better than what we thought it was going to be when they started announcing uh, the um, you know the, the building of that and the changing. Yeah, I agree. Way higher end than I expected, right? Like, oh, yes. Like, I did not yes. expect the super high end stores to be there. But when you walk around now, it's, it's crazy. That, And again, I'm not a shopper. Uh, do a lot of my clothes shopping at Target and Kohl's. So <laughs> I know you're like, you are terrible. <laughs> you know, like, no, because I do too. But you know that you, you, Uniqlo, Uniqlo is extremely cheap. I don't think people realize. That Uniqlo, the Japanese uh, chain, which, again, there's very few Uniqlos in the country so far. I believe there's actually one open in King of Prussia, if I'm not mistaken, if I read correctly, or it's already open. Uh, but uh, it is extremely affordable. However, you do have to be a certain body type to fit into even the extra larges at Uniqlo. <laughs> yeah, I will say that for myself and for people like me. It's a little bit difficult. <laughs> see, that, that's the kind of thing. Like, I don't need to stress about it. Like, I can go to Target. I can go to Kohl's. I know what size jeans I am. I know what size shorts I am. I know what size T-shirt I am. And listen, my, my wardrobe is mostly Marvel and Disney T-shirts and jeans and shorts anyway. So, and, you know, in the summer, running shirts and, and running shorts. At, at home, well, in the winter, too, but I'm on a treadmill, so nobody sees me. It doesn't matter. I can run in my boxer briefs. Horrible thought for <laughs> everyone listening right now. <laughs> but no one would notice. Uh but yeah, I, I I was I actually getting back to the actual point. I was really surprised walking around at just high, excuse me, how high level the shopping actually is now. It's pretty cool. And 
they still do have the regular, you know, Disney shopping in the Disney stores and the co-op, which I, I love that store. I think it's very, oh, very yes. cool. Uh, well, the co-op the, is not cheap. I don't, I don't feel the co-op stuff is cheap. Oh, no, no, no. It's not cheap, but I mean, it has no. like that Disney feel to it at least. It's oh, not yeah. all like high-end shopping. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love the uh, the classic attraction stuff they have there. It's very cool. So yeah, really good pick. I I will never shop there because, <laughs> and I don't want my kids to know that, that they can shop there. It's like we're just gonna walk through. <laughs> you can just look at the stuff in these stores. <laughs> Tell them it's it's an attraction. It's not a store. It's a mall. No, it's a it's a it's a museum. It's a museum you can walk through. You can't buy anything. My kids are good. They usually don't ask for stuff. But on this last trip that we got back from, I don't know why Jack was asking for it everything huh. and it's weird like he never cared before but this time it was we couldn't even walk into a store on a cruise or in uh like magic kingdom or anything without him being like can i get this can i get this and we were like no <laughs> you can't <laughs> <laughs> sorry like we're here this is why we're here we're not here to shop uh, and you know that amy buy and i we buy them um souvenirs on every trip that we take but oh I mean, yes we were just there in january you go back in february you no way you're buying stuff forget it no, um, no. Meanwhile, I sound like a horrible father, but I'm not. <laughs> no, no, I don't yeah, think I am. Horrible. I'm just, I'm just like, listen. No, that's not horrible. You guys have to kind of temper your expectations a little bit here. Uh, yes. You know, did land and see trip at six and four? Seriously, that's crazy. All right, on to my next one. See, and you know where I'm going. Probably, my. I have two more. Uh, I, I specifically, I'm not going to say one of them because I'm sure you're going to have one of them. All right, so I'm going to save that for. Actually, I'm going to take that one now then, because I know which which one you're thinking. I think. And okay. that is the lounges around Walt Disney World. Is that what you were thinking? Well, actually, I was, I was thinking in this case you were going to say a very specific one. Yes. But that's fine because I'm sure we're going to announce a specific one anyway. Yeah, the specific one is the one I'm building in my house. So, yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that is – as I, right now I'm looking at the wall where it's going to go because uh, I'm sitting in my little office slash studio recording this. And uh, the lounges, including Trader Sam's, of course, at – Let's say it to, no. Don't let's not say it together. I'll say it. <laughs> Disney's <laughs> Polynesian Village Resort and Bungalows, uh, which always makes me laugh for that name. I, don't, I do not understand why it's that la- that long, but uh, it that I love the lounges. I love Trader Sam's. It's one of my favorite places in Disneyland and in Walt Disney World. Um, listen, they're they're really fun. They're well themed. There's usually entertainment in the lounges. There, we I just actually did a whole episode. With uh, Johnny Shortsleeve a few weeks ago, uh, I forget the number of the episode off the top of my head, but we talked about primarily the lounges, and we recorded it in the Bellevue Lounge at uh, the Boardwalk. They're, listen, they're a lot of fun. Uh, my other favorites, Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. I love uh, that. Yeah. At, at, I guess it's it's technically a lounge, right? I mean, it's it's not at a resort, but it's the same concept, I think, as the lounges that are around the resorts. Well, I think the actual word lounge, I think, historically means, like, there's practically no food. And it really is just about sitting quietly and talking while in the background music is quietly playing. So a lounge is definitely different than a bar. I would say Trader Sam's and Doc uh, uh, Jock, uh, Lindsay is, is, is a bar. That's just me. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. Because <laughs> I'm putting all these in one category. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're you're out of luck here, uh, Chuck, because it's my show and I do what I want. Um, <laughs> Good point. So, <laughs> so yeah. So then, territory lounge, I love. And then, l- listen, you said quiet music in the background, right? But what about the River Roost Lounge? It's a lounge, but four, three, four nights a week, it is not la- or quiet music. It is loud music in the background with Bob Jackson and his show over there. So, yeah. Anyway, these lounges, the lounges, the bars are my favorite. Some of my favorite places to hang out. Uh, and if you're in a, you know, again, River Roost Lounge, you can bring your kids, especially when Bob's there. Great show, entertains the whole family. Uh, the other places, not as much. Like, you probably, your kids probably wouldn't love Jock Lindsay's, probably won't love Trader Sam's, even though they can get in there until later in the evening, because there's not a whole lot for them to do in there. You're gonna, there's no TVs, you know, you know what I mean? You're not gonna, they're not gonna sit and be quiet. So it's a great place for adults to go and relax and, uh, they do have some food. There's small plates, uh, tons of different, you know, mixed drinks and alcoholic beverages and different beers. And even if you're not a drinker, you can go uh, and have, they have lots of the the non-alcoholic mixed drinks and fruity drinks, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's a really cool. They're, they're cool places for adults to hang out, I think. 
No, completely, completely agreed. And I actually have, um, I was going to wait to the, this moment because I knew it was going to happen, uh, to tell a story about Trader Sam's. Wait, wait, wait this- I'm, I'm, that, I'm that predictable. <laughs> Oh yes, I knew exactly. I knew you were going to say that. So, <laughs> um, uh, uh, so this past weekend, um, my family and I went to the Magic Kingdom all day. But we began the day by going to Kona Cafe, which uh, very underrated restaurant. I feel like I should eat there all the time. Yeah, by agree. The way. Totally. Agree. Yeah, um, and much easier to get into, obviously, than others, and, and yeah. less expensive. But anyway, um, so. My niece has gotten to the point where, you know, she definitely asks a lot of questions. And I feel like she knows already that I'm probably the coolest person she knows. And that I would, <laughs> I would tell her answers that are pretty much the same answers I would give an adult if they asked me. So she asked me a lot of questions. And she actually – she saw the door for Trader Sam's and she asked me about it. And so I began to describe to her. But this was, this was in the early afternoon when it, before it was open. And so I began to describe to her what happens there. And she was so curious that when we came back at 10 o'clock at night – uh, on the monorail to then get in our car, because obviously we left our car there because we started at Corner Cafe. Um, she she asked me again, and she said, can we see it? And I said, well, so I went inside to the podium, and I just asked the lady, you know, I know that it's no kids are allowed at this hour, um, but my niece is really, really curious. Can I literally bring her inside for two seconds to look around, and, uh, and that's it? And they let me do it. I thought that was very nice. And that's my niece cool. was very – and now I know, like, my niece – literally she said – um, when I'm old enough, I will come here. And I'm like, oh, okay, for your 21st birthday, when you can drink for the first time, we'll come here. <laughs> sure, her 21st birthday. <laughs> just, like you, just like you and I did, Chuck. We waited for our 21st birthday. <laughs> and just like my kids will definitely be doing. Or yes. they will face the con- consequences, definitely. Uh, of course. You know what's really funny is that's awesome uh, you know, service to let her let you. True, that too. Uh, it's, it's amazing to let you bring her in because it, they're pretty strict about that kind of stuff normally. Yeah, and it was tar- 10.30 at night. And yes, when we walked in, everyone uh, like turned and stared. I felt like I was like Norm walking into Cheers. Uh, <laughs> with a kid? <laughs> <laughs> with a kid. <laughs> I didn't know him and Vera ever had a kid. That never came up in the, the 11 seasons. There's actually but, a, great, uh, there's a great episode of Cheers when they're having a birthday party. And it's for Frederick. Remember Lilith and Fraser? Yes, son? yes. And Norm comes in, and it's, it's all the little kids in a bar. It's like early. It's like 11 a.m. And... There's a little kid in a in a brown suit and tie sitting in Norm's seat, <laughs> yes. drinking, drinking like a milk or something. And Norm walks up to him and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And the kid's like, "Nothing." He's like, "You like that stool?" And the kid's like, "Yup." And he picks the kid up and he puts him on the ground and he sits back down. <laughs> You'll thank at, me later. Or something. Yeah, he looks at Cliff and he says, "I wish somebody would have done that for me." In my yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that episode. I do. Uh, I'm such a Cheers junkie. It's like my favorite show of all time. I love that show. Uh, yeah, but yeah, too. you were, you were the weird norm bringing the the poor little kid into the bar at ten thirty at night. Yes, yes. But literally, we walked in for two seconds, and so she looked around and she's like, "Oh, okay," because I, I mean, I had described pretty well. I think some of the things that she would see when she goes in there. Yeah, that's and really funny. Uh, so yeah, so now she's all excited to wait until she's twenty one. I don't know what time. I know the place opens at four. I don't know what time um, children have to leave. I think it's eight. Let me. You know, I want to Google. I it. would assume so. Hold on, uh, that's what I assumed. Talk for a minute while while I'm checking this out. <laughs> so uh, tell, um, me, tell, she, tell a story actually, to, the, to the listener right now. She did have me um, uh, show her a video also of some of the you know the special effects and things because obviously it would have been too much coincidence that we went in there for those two seconds when any of the special effects were happening. Right. Uh, so so we did look up because obviously people have posted to YouTube videos of you know twenty minutes long of all the special effects and, and things that happened at the at the bar. And there there are some really cool ones that they do. Oh yeah, do. of course. Yeah. So yeah, it is 8 p.m. Uh, 21. Okay. 8 p.m. is a cutoff for anyone 21 and under. Right. right. Uh, so uh, that's interesting. I, I thought it was 18. Actually, I, I didn't realize it was 21. But it makes sense. You have to be of drinking. Yeah, the drinking. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, it was cool. that's cool, and it's cool that they let you do that. I, I, I wonder if it was me with my double stroller or my single stroller. If they would have been like, "Yeah, come on in." <laughs> I probably not. They probably would have like, "Dude, you have problems. You want to bring your three kids in here right now." Uh, but yeah, that, that is cool. They let you come in there. Um, all right. So I think I have, you have one more to, I think I have, yeah, one I more. do have one more. I do have one more. Let me see if I have one or two. Uh, I've, okay. Like I was saying, I have two more, so I'm going to go with, um, yeah. So I'm going to go with one that's all over the place and it's the, or they are the backstage tours. Oh uh, yes. It's a great way to spend, you know, a day or several hours or a few hours of your, your Disney trip. 
Uh, the one thing is that for most of the back the backstage tours, they do charge a fee on top of the park ticket. So oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's you know I think for like ninety nine percent of them they do. So that's the thing. It, it does get a little expensive, but Disney travel professionals like me will book them for you for free. So just the, you know, little again shameless plug for myself. Uh, but listen, they're they're pretty much for any type of guest, right? You can have. The magic kind of explained to you when you go backstage or ruined for you, if you will. Or you can take a tour that'll just kind of give you a closer look at some of the stuff that you see on stage, like the behind the scenes tour at Epcot or something like that. Uh, they had the Keys to the Kingdom tour, which is very cool. You get to go down into uh, the util doors or the tunnels for people to, you know, to check out what's down there. It's it, something that I think a lot of people who've never worked in Walt Disney World really, really want to get down there and see what that's all about. Uh, there's a new Magic Kingdom Ultimate Classic store. Have you seen that yet? Yes. Yes, I've seen the people walking around. That one is one that really appeals to me. Uh, be- just because if you're a, you know an old school Disney fan and you want to do the classic attractions and have lunch, that's something. I think it's, I can't remember if that's one ninety nine or 99 on top of the ticket. Uh, but it's like a six-hour uh, The tour. odds are, if, if, if you're in doubt, the odds are it's one ninety nine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, have to, I have to look that up. I'll add it to the, to the notes and the, and the show notes page. Uh, but then you can even like swim with the dolphins, the Epcot Dive Quest, and the and Living Seas. There's all kinds of different stuff you can do. Most of them are for adults. They have a few that are available for kids as well. But I just think it's something that if – and if this is something that if you're going for a longer trip too, it might be worth it. If you're staying for more than a week, you do Magic Kingdom a couple times, you do all the other parks, it might be something that you want to throw on to the end of your trip – just to kind of get a different look at the parks that you've seen maybe a couple times. So yeah, I think that's one for adults that it's really worth your time and money to check those out. Uh, yes, and I, I would, I, whenever I think of uh, the whole concept of the tours, um, first of all, I don't even consider behind the seats because I believe it's still free, and why would you want to do it? But also... <laughs> that's what I was saying. There's some that aren't. <laughs> I do make fun of behind the seats a lot. I used to coordinate it many years ago. So um, uh, people did not get to be a cast member, even temporarily in college program, like so many of us have. Um, you never get to see backstage. And if you are a true Disney theme park fan or even a theme park fan in general, one of the things you're always going to wonder is how things are in the parts of the park that you don't get to see. So, so, so yes, I do think that is, it is worth the money and it is worth the time uh, to do some of those tours, especially the ones that lets you see backstage at, at Animal Kingdom or the Magic Kingdom and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Magic Kingdom, I think, is is the top. Oh, one. number one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you really part. want to see. I, you want to get underground. You want to see the tunnels. You want to do all that stuff. But you're right with Animal Kingdom too. There's so much to see backstage there that I just the animal, you know, the animal uh, enclosures themselves that are backstage that aren't you know in the safari and stuff. It's amazing how much room there actually is in that park that you don't really get to see. It's, I mean, yes, and, it's and the crazy. facilities. And you're, oh, yeah. I mean, I remember growing up, you know, obviously before I lived in Florida and got to go to Disney World more than once every few years, um, we used to go to the Bronx Zoo every single year. And I was always curious, you know, what would the facilities look like? Because it's obvious that there has to be a place where these animals uh, have to take turns staying in or, you know, where they go at night, where they, where they have to sleep, where they have to eat, where they have to get treated during the winter when, the, when you know, most of the zoo is closed. I was always curious. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's very cool to go back and see and. I've said before on, on this podcast that it always kind of creeped me out when I worked uh, at Animal Kingdom years and years and eons ago when I would go out to uh, Conservation Station and get to go backstage and see the gaps in the fences of the, like, the cages backstage and the enclosures for the animals that the zookeepers can just kind of walk into. It always freaked me out. Like There was this elephant in there, and there's the, the bars have enough room for a regular sized person to just walk in. And I would think, what if some, you know, cat or guest or, or on, you know, uh, you know, cast member who wasn't, you know, trustworthy could get in. The, it just freaked me out that they could walk in there, but they can, if you've ever seen those things backstage, they can just walk right into it to an animal enclosure. It's crazy. But then, yeah. of course you can't do that anywhere near on stage, but it was a, it's an interesting thing to see. It's very, very cool. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Chuck. So you said you have one more, and then I, I have one more to finish it out. Okay. Unless so, we have the same one, then we'll just kind of. No, talk I about doubt it. it. So mine is is really a concept. Mm-hmm. It's not even <laughs> it's not even a place for adults to actually enjoy. And it's surprising, I know, for a person who's cynical and uh, frozen hearted like myself to even mention this. But the reason I'm mentioning <laughs> is because I actually saw it happen twice. I mean, I've seen it happen before many times over the years, but I saw it happen twice just this past weekend alone when I just happened to go to Disney World um, all day Saturday and all day Sunday with family and friends, and that is to propose. So it is amazing how many times, in the Magic Kingdom especially, when all of a sudden you'll see like a, a, a circle of people clapping and you'll realize, oh, that person just proposed. That's true. <laughs> and it happens all the time. And, and there, I think there's a lot more romantic, more quiet places in Walt Disney World you know, to propose to than just getting on your knee in the middle of uh, Main Street USA in the middle of the daytime. Um, but um, but I've, I, although I have seen that. But nowadays, you know, if you've got the money, you could even do like the firework cruise. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if they still do it, but at some point they even had a thing where you can actually set up the, the little garden area by the central hub and where the rose garden was. But that's been knocked down, right, for, the, for yeah, expanding of the, the paths. Yeah. But you used to be able to pay for like champagne and roses to be like waiting there because I guess the point was that you would propose and then you'd spend like an hour – like there, just the two of you quietly. I don't, I don't really understand the concept, but, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> but there are. You can think of so many great romantic places that Walt Disney World to propose, and if if Disney's a thing that you both, you know, obviously the big part of your relationship, which many people I've met, it, it is, in, in, including obviously gets to the point where you might even get married there as well. Um, yeah, I could totally, uh, I see that, and I see that a lot of adults who come by themselves, they might uh, use the trip for that. Who in their right mind would get engaged in Walt Disney World? I've never heard of such a thing. Oh, wait. I always forget. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many of my friends have gotten engaged in Walt Disney World that I forget which ones did it, which ones did it. Yes. So I was one of those people that proposed in the Magic Kingdom that you very nicely put down a little bit in your, <laughs> in your last one there. Uh, I may have done it on Main Street USA, which you probably put down a little bit too. So <laughs> was it in the daytime or at nighttime? It was at night, but please enjoy your last couple of minutes on this podcast because <laughs> it will indeed be your last few minutes on this podcast. Uh, okay, that is that is hilarious. Forget uh, about your free exposure, Chuck. Not happening anymore. It, it, it's just that there's so many people. I, I even know somebody who has gotten married twice and both times proposed at Walt Disney World. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So no, you're right. Listen. I don't know if they do the, uh, the the champagne thing in the Magic Kingdom anymore. I know I'm assuming there's no space for it anymore where it used well, to be. They do. I know they used to do one over by the Wishing Well too, and that's the area is still available. Uh, the but, Wishing Well? You mean in California? No, no. There's the, the little well on the. It's it's near Merida's meet and greet if you walk up the little. Oh there. right, right. They, I know they have that, uh, and there, there's. I thought that was a smoking section now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can walk up there. <laughs> I think it's just an extended queue for Merida now. Really, is all it is. Yeah, probably. Uh, but then there's um, there's a whole bunch of different packages. I think there's there's at least twenty different ways that you can do it. I I, I think that number isn't outrageous uh, that you can get Disney floral and uh, whatever to help you plan your engagement. Mine did not go that smoothly. I, I had planned like four different things. All of them worked out. So I ended up kind of. I didn't want to bring. The, this is very romantic. I didn't want the ring to be in my pocket for another day because I was so freaked out. So I ended up doing it on uh, the in front of Cinderella Castle during Wishes. Um, but, you know, Disney was very special to Amy and I, and we met there, and we... Yeah, of course. Everything, so we got, you know, so it was a big deal. We had, like, our first official date there and everything, so for us it was cool. My plan was to do it originally at Ohana during dinner, but uh, we weren't seated near a window, and then... We had a kind of a loud crowd near us, and I was like, this isn't going to work out. So I've told the story before in the podcast. But anyway, yeah, yes, uh, it is a great <laughs> idea for uh, – and even though it might – I'm trying to think. Is this something that you actually approve of? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I do technically. No, no, I'm saying – I mean, you know me. I always have to be a little bit cynical no, about know. things I'm that technically. You, yeah. Believe me, All there the is time. a certain person, by coincidence, the person who's already done it twice. Maybe the third time's a charm. If he proposed to me, 
that would be very, very special. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe someday, whoever it is, will propose or I will propose at Walt Disney World. I could see that being a thing. Yes. No, I, always, I, I actually do think it's actually really nice. You know what's funny is my thing was I always wanted to propose. This is before I even had a girlfriend to propose to. I thought when the Skyway was there, that would have been like the real, a really cool proposal. But yeah, they tore that sucker down, and you couldn't do it anymore. So well, you go wait for the new gondola system to go between Epcot and the studios. No, exciting! We're gonna have to do. A, we have to do <laughs> Although a those are gonna show. be huge. There's gonna be like thirty people on that gondola. It's, it's, like, like it's not private. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be like the London Eye, like going on the. Eye well, for they it. do have that at the at the uh, Orlando Eye. You can pay for a special cab. With like a uh, violinist and, and and everything, yeah, some champagne and stuff. Yeah, so Disney's listening. Yeah. you know that's happening soon. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as those gondolas are in, they're gonna start doing charging for that. Uh, all right, so my last one. Yes. Uh, and this one, I'm surprised you didn't mention because this is one that I know you really really enjoy, and it's the festivals, right? Oh yes, yes. So yes. go to Epcot for the festivals that now seem like they've run 12 months a year. <laughs> it's pretty close. Right, so go for the food and wine festival, go for the flower and garden festival, which is you know now like a mini food and wine festival. Go for the festival of the arts, which is now a mini like a mini flower and garden festival. That's kind of a mini food and wine festival. <laughs> you know, listen, they have lots of great food, great music, really cool like live acts in the uh, the garden rocks. I think that's what it's called. Uh, uh, music series and then for food and wine what do they call it the eat to the beat that's right eat to the beat series uh you can go see and vogue you can go see the gym blossoms you can go see starship oh, there's been some great club uh, break uh, the commodores there's been uh Bee Gees, uh oh, yeah. tribute band there's been there's yeah the four, uh, christopher uh, cross that's my favorite four tops i think am i crazy i think the four tops have been there Unless that's through, I'm getting them mixed no, up. No, no, I'm I'm thinking of another. No, I know who you're thinking of. It's There's another Motown top, band so. that was. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking of. Uh, but maybe the OJ's or the Spinners or making one of those. my way back to you, babe. Who's that? The Spinners. The Spinners. The spinners. That's the spinners. what I'm thinking of. Yes. Um, and then there's been yeah, like I said, the Jim Blossoms. Uh, oh, uh, the Spin Doctors were there when, when I saw them before. Chubby. Big Checkers. Bad Voodoo Daddy. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. Big yep. Bad Bo- Bo- Voodoo Daddy's been there. Yeah. Chubby Checker has been there a, a, a bunch of times. Her, is it Herman and the Hermits? Uh, that's one that yes. I mentioned recently on a, li- a Facebook Live video. That is a much, I think it's in like the 60s, early 60s band. Yes. And I never heard of them. And we were there for when they were playing. And I noticed that the line for the American Garden Theater for the show was all ECVs and walkers. <laughs> I swear, this isn't a joke. This is what I noticed. And I was like, I said to Amy, I think my mom was there, and I was like, "What is going on? What? Why are they?" And then I looked, and it was, it was all like these older, elderly people waiting in line. I'm like, "This is strange." And here it was with this band, Herman and the Hermits. It was a, you know, I don't know, a the Herman, band. Her, Herman's Herman's Hermits. Is that what it is, Herman's Hermits? I think, I think so. Yes, I, I know the songs. They were just basically after the Beatles. They were just part of the whole British invasion. I see. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I never heard of them. Uh, oh yeah. So yeah. So they play there. So yeah. Anyway, lots of great food, great music. And it's really, really great for adults. If you're going to one of the festivals and you don't want to get... Listen, this is, it's, it's horrible for me to have to say this, but I'd like to put a disclaimer in there. If you don't want to get completely overwhelmed by the crowds and the number of people that are there for bachelor parties and college kids, go during the week to one of the festivals. Except, right. of course, the, the uh, Festival of the Arts pretty much only work, worked out on the weekends recently. But if you're going for a flower garden or food and wine, go during the week. Because the crowds will be lower. It won't be as many people kind of going drinking around the world and that kind of thing. Which is fun when you're young and then you're our age. You're like, oh my God, get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to deal with this. But if you're younger, if you're college age or even a little older than that, that's a lot of fun to do that. I've done it. Uh, I wouldn't do it now, but I did it when I was young. But yeah, I think the festivals are an awesome, awesome way to spend your time in the parks as an adult. I mean, Epcot really, but still. Right, it is only Epcot that that does the festivals, really, at least the ones that are worth it. Um, And yes, I have really nothing that I could add to that because it's just obvious that adults have more fun. Um, Even even like locals, I mean, we can tell when we go on the weekends, it's definitely more adults that are having way more fun. I mean, the kids are kind of getting actually trampled on and sometimes (laughs) vomited on. 
uh, it does get a bit rowdy. Uh, there was actually an article I just read today that was saying that, you know, I, I think the article was about um, comparing or hearing about Shanghai Disneyland, where I guess people are, are a bit more more rowdy and more like destructive and, and, and with littering and going to the bathroom in public and all that kind of stuff. And they were comparing it to the fact that what happens on like Saturday nights during the Epcot Food and Wine Festival, it's not that different. Like security, <laughs> Disney security will tell you it is not that much different, the, uh, the situations that happen on those nights. But that makes it fun. And if you don't have kids to worry about, it makes it a lot of fun. And if you do have kids to worry about, call me and I'll help you plan it. Because <laughs> I don't want exactly. to talk people out just, of Just to avoid, just, as long as you could easily avoid those hours. It really yeah, yeah. is just a matter of hours on yes. certain nights of the week where maybe it gets to be, uh, you know, maybe it gets to be a little bit too much. That's all. Yeah, I mean, there's been times when I've walked through and I've been like, all right, this is getting a little out of control. There is. I mean, no, also think honest. about it. You're, you're easily, on a Saturday night at Epcot during those things, Easily 60,000 people are there. So yeah. the odds of you actually seeing <laughs> the handful of people who are going to do something stupid, really, really small. It's like, it's like, it's like the same, uh, you know, it's like being hit by lightning. Like it's those, those kind of odds. <laughs> it's, like, it's like watching some, <laughs> some dope climb the pyramid at, outside the Mexico Pavilion. So where they actually yeah. have to put a sign up. That says no climbing. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, one time I actually was called by uh, a brother and sister-in-law and their friends who were some of those stupid people and got in trouble, and I had to go and, <laughs> and pick them up. Uh, <laughs> but so so things happen. Did they get escorted happen, out? But it's rare. Um, they actually kind of got separated, but the one, the person who was being the stupidest, uh, yes, he was escorted out, and then we had to figure out where they were and. Yes, it was a it was a whole thing. Yes, one of them wound up at the hospital in celebration. Oh. Yes, it was a whole thing. <laughs> oh, it's like my bachelor party all over again. <laughs> but my bachelor party was not in Epcot; it was in Philadelphia. So I can say, at least I wasn't anyway. <laughs> I wasn't around children anyway. Chuck, as always, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for doing this on short Thank notice. Thank you. This is a good Thank one, you. I think. And I think a lot of people will hear this. I mean, like, yeah, I, I now you know, I I think. Like I said earlier, people get the impression still that it's only for kids. And I think we just talked for 40 plus minutes about why it's not. And it, we just, we, seriously, I didn't even, we didn't even like, we're just skimming the surface here. There, are oh, talking yeah. about, you know, other things like renting boats and golf and the fireworks cruises and uh, the, the dessert parties and stuff like that that we didn't even talk about. And, you know, the new thing that they just announced at California Grill where you pay uh, a certain amount of money, and you do you have small plates, uh, alcohol, and see the fireworks, and there's no meal included. It's a new, brand new thing that's just been been announced this week. I mean, like I said, we're just we're just touching the surface of the kind of cool experiences that adults. Yeah, can and have. something tells me they're going to come up with even more in the years to come. Yeah, because yeah, they're going to maximize. <laughs> they're gonna you know if they're building more resorts, they're building more DVCs. They're going to put more stuff in there for you to do. They really are. So again, yeah, yeah. Chuck, thank you again. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for doing it on, on such short notice. You're welcome. And, and uh, yeah, a lot of fun. So thank you. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There podcast. Thank you so, so much to my guest, my friend, the oh so cynical, but oh so lovable, Mr. Chuck Rodriguez. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, Chuck has been doing the adult thing in Walt Disney World for a long, long, long time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, Chuck is not that old. I think he's only two years older than me. But I like to give him a lot of grief over it because, as I always say, you're only young once, but you can be immature forever. And of course, that's not my quote. I heard that somewhere and I love it and I use it all the time. So if you know the actual person who said it, Please understand that I'm not saying that is my original quote. Okay, so thank you, Chuck, once again for coming on. And thank you for listening. As always, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. A little over a year ago when I first started podcasting, I thought I would like it. I thought I might even enjoy it. And now I absolutely love it. I love coming up with show topics every week. I love talking to interesting people. I love that I have people that listen to this show. It's so much fun. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening to this episode. And thank you for listening to every episode. I really appreciate it. And as long as you keep listening, I will keep making these. So as always, I just ask if you did enjoy the episode, please just tell someone about it. Word of mouth 
really does help this show travel and spread. So thank you for doing that for me. And if you'd like it, you can always leave a review, an honest review over at iTunes. I'd really appreciate that as well. Just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to There podcast each and every Monday morning, as well as a new episode of the Ear to There podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week, each and every Wednesday morning. And incredibly, I just got through both of those in one take. Listen to me, like I, uh, some kind of Hollywood person, a take. Come on. But I did get through both of those statements in one shot, one try. So I'm pretty proud of myself today. Okay. Thank you so much again for listening. Thank you for spreading the word. And until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.